Hello and welcome to episode 5 of Making Tracks. This week I'm just going to show you how far I've gotten. Welcome back. Apologies for my absenteeism last week. I had a very important exam, needed to focus on it, but uh, you don't want to hear about me and my nonsense. You want to see what's going on with this. Okay, so, but uh, because of last week's lack of, um, I thought it would be better if I just showed you where I am with everything right now. Let's start with module two. So as you can see, I've built a ramp for the road the only reason I'm getting away with using the N-Gage is because it's brick and there's no windows, doors or anything like that. So that's the, uh, the explanation for using an N-Gage kit for the walls. And I've taken the measurements I used for the bridge for the road. So hopefully that's the right size, but as is with roads and pavements, they can be whatever size really. I could even squeeze them down to a single file if I really wanted to. With these kits, they also came with additional brick print for uh, additional customization, I think it said in the piece of paper. So what I've done is I've made a start on wrapping the abutments for the bridge and retaining wall kit number two will fill this last block here because that's not quite finished, I ran out of pieces. So you get four in a pack. So I went around the corner first just to gauge where everything was gonna go. So that last one's gonna slip down there and then that'll be that section done. The other three will fit over here. These, points and the connecting piece of track are soldered together or were joined just here then took a dremel and went down that way for the ones that needed cutting that's the word so that is now separable so i can pull the baseboards apart uh, this ramp is lined up perfectly with the rest of the platform but is attached to module two there's two connecting pieces sat here ready and waiting to receive track to Go in that direction. So that's module two. Module one, the important one for the Hornby Diorama Challenge. First off, this is what gets my attention first. This is the crane, all nicely painted up. It might need a little bit more tweaking here and there, but for the most part, I'm pretty happy with it. Space yellow with some dirt and rust on it, and the, uh, the hook still moves. I have seen on a website they do um, scale chains. So when I get round to it, or more specifically when I got a bit more money, I'll probably buy a TT gauge chain and then um, dangle it off there, obviously out the way. If you've been keeping up with my shorts, you'll see the two lines have been laid, ballasted. The platforms have been painted, slightly weathered and stuck into place. I've also attached the fences for both sides, although this one is going to need a, a hole in it at some point, but we'll cover that in a minute. Also over here, again I'll have to provide a close-up because you won't see from over there, there's a gate leading down to a set of steps here, and I've painted up uh, one of the sets of railway crews that I got from More View Models, and again I'll have to come back to that one because that'll be uh, spoiling something for later. The shed is structure-wise complete. Um, I did add the glazing into the windows, although I'm considering removing it because it's creating a bit of a frosted glass kind of effect and for this shed I really want people to be able to see inside for what's going on. The local inspection pits are also installed. I just need to insert the tracks in. So I've decided to make this shed removable from the layout but still have powered lights. Demonstrate it. It still comes apart. Gently, gently. There we go. So I've installed a battery pack under here for now. So, uh, it's the middle of the day, I don't think you'll be able to see that. So what I've done is I've installed Lego in certain places on the bottom of the shed. So there's, I haven't finished yet, but there's some pieces attached to the bottom of the shed here, and there's other pieces attached to the base. But again, it does need a little bit of work, because what I am finding is these pins that I've installed, some of them like to keep disappearing. So what I'm thinking of doing is, um, removing some of these, uh, adjusting them, 
somewhat and then be attaching them. Because basically the problem is these ones here. I didn't initially I didn't want to glue pegs or Lego pieces onto these little legs here because during construction I already managed to snap one half. In half so I've glued that back on and being aware of its uh, fragility I decided to put all the bricks down here but the problem that's now emerged there is that when I take this in and out these legs have a tendency to move so I can't always line it up properly without really putting in some effort and this one here has just disappeared entirely where it's been pushed in after going in there so if I take one a one layered one by one brick, drill a hole in it, and then I can glue those pins exactly where I want them, and hopefully they will stay still. And then when I plug it back in, everything will line up perfectly, and the lights will still function as designed. I want to include a welding seam, but realistically the only place I can put it is in the shed with a little blue sparky light uh, working on a piece of rolling stock either on a ramp or just on the track we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. So with that in mind, I wanted to be able to take shed off so you can still have a really, really good look at what's going on inside should you want to. So that's that. Uh, also with the shed, I have decided that having the station offices, ticket office and everything else inside the shed, just like Tunbridge Wells West at the Spa Valley Railway, I was compromising too much track. So I'd only be able to get one locomotive in at this end. If the station had gone at the back, all four roads would have only been able to accommodate one Pacific sized locomotive, possibly a couple of 06 sized when we get that far in uh, on these release schedule. So what I've decided is to I have a um, museum type approach to this building. So there's a tiny bit of track compromised uh, in roads one and two. So um, window wise, we're talking about three windows in. So probably about there, I can't see because of the angle I'm sitting. But then this does create an issue that I now don't have a station building. So I've ordered another model X kit of West Mauling Station which is actually not that far from the Spa Valley Railway, but it was opened by a different rail operating company pre-grouping. This was, the Spa Valley Railway was originally operated by, I believe it was the London Brighton and South Coast Railway. And West Mauling Station would have been built by the um, South Eastern and Chatham Railway, I believe. I don't have my notes in front of me, so if I've made a mistake there, please forgive me. So I have a station building, which at the moment is still in kit form. Arrived this morning, clearly enough. Now at this end, I'm going to have access to the siding here so that uh, lorries can drop off locomotives and rolling stock um, as discussed last time. Uh, fences and gates there representing that, but again, that's, uh, that's coming later. So, if the station goes here, then it will potentially uh, compromise the entry into the unloading bay there. If I put it up this end, then this end is going to be very busy and some of the details involved with uh, the canopy here might get lost. So I'm thinking somewhere in the middle. But another kit which I have from the Greenwood Laser. And it's essentially a uh, footbridge, but it's sized specifically to sit on top of the platforms. But again, how I have my platforms, with this one being so skinny, realistically, the only place I can put it for it to make sense is right up this end. So that will nullify any idea of uh, the station building going right on the edge. So realistically, I think probably there would make sense for the station building. However, that will then obscure the view of uh, the figures for a start that I've already placed here. So more than likely, um, station building will probably go in this kind of area. So the only thing it's going to obscure is some generic uh, platform there. The only, thing, the only extra thing that's going to be there is the benches and the bins. And then you can still see uh, the point of interest here and uh, the figures here. So station building footbridge. Um, also next on my project list is the station lighting. I've taken two and I've attached it to this spare piece of platform that I have with PVA glue. Granted not very well. So when I come down come to sticking these down I'll probably use super glue just because PVA just isn't doing the trick here. Um, I've drawn lines on there to represent the uh, the skinnier of the platforms and now that I'm looking at it I can see I've put the drill in the wrong yeah, I've installed them on literally the platform edge. They should have gone on that second line there, but never mind. It still gives a good representation of 
what it's going to look like. So that's that. They will be uh, 6.5 centimetres apart going all the way down and they will be going on the uh, shed end of the platform as well, like butted almost right up to the wall. The spacing is inspired by the supports on the wall. So obviously they're going to be parallel all the way along. That's that. Uh, one of my followers uh, messaged me on Facebook and he offered to send me this. Now, if you've been watching my shorts, you might recognise this. This is um, a resin printed 1970s inspired house. For someone to reach out to me and offer me this is incredibly humbling. And I honestly can't thank the guy enough. Once he lets me know that he's going to be producing these for sale, um, obviously I will share where he's selling them and his details. But that is absolutely amazing. And again, thank you so much. I honestly can't put into words what that means to me to be sent a gift like that from a complete stranger. And thank again, thank you. Honestly, I... <laughs> Right, I'm going to move on from that or I'm going to start getting a bit gushy. So thank you for... Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining me for episode five of Let's Make Tracks. Um, I apologise for the lack of moving locomotives, but as you can see, um, I'm not in a position to do that right now without going back to episode one and it just being a boring loop running around the table. So thank you for thank you for tuning in for episode five of Let's Make Tracks. My name's Peter and I will see you again soon.